Okay, so to do shafts, we're going to go to the level, uh, either level, I'm doing it from the level 6, but you can create a shaft for any plan, and you can even create it from the 3D. I'm just going to explain how it works. You press shaft under architecture, and you, pre and you select and you create a rectangle or any other shape that is your opening. You're going to say okay, and similarly it's going to not do anything, it's going to just, you know, but it really did a cut. So if you go to the 3D, and what I'm going to use now, I think is, is very important, is the section box in the 3D. If you don't select anything, you can scroll down and press section box. It gives you this box that you can select and drag around. What you can do is start discovering where the opening is. There it is. If you don't see anything, you have to scroll on top of it and wait for that blue sign. You select it and you can drag it up as much as you want. Now remember I said from level basement to the roof, so we probably want to go further up even and cut the roof as well because we're going to create a little uh, mechanical room in the top. Okay? So, that's it. You can cut this and see it in multiple ways. So, I personally think this, uh, the section box is very valuable to see the project in different ways. Now, you can go back to the level 6, level 2, all of them are going to have the shaft there. This is the one I did before. The question is not so much how you do a shaft, which is, as you can see, the dumbest thing you can do on earth. It's more, where do you put this opening in your slab? And what are the dimensions of these shafts? So you can always select from the plan views the shaft itself and say edit sketch. You can select the lines and you can click on the dimensions as we've done several other times and change the numbers. Okay. If you press OK, the entire slab shaft changes and adapts. So you can also select the shaft and MV for moving and start moving a line to the structure. I said it's in the center. I'm going to do one example. If you want to be more precise, meaning I want to snap exactly to the structure, I, you probably want to go to Fine, select your shaft in blue, and V, snap, snap. So you're exactly respecting the structure, no? But you should go back, and this is the important step, actually. Here. And if it's passenger, we need to have a B and an A, plus 8, plus 4, plus 3, and 5. You have to add these guys together. For example, B for passengers, 5 feet, plus 3, plus 5 inches, which is what? 5 and 8 inches, no? So I'm going to select, edit boundary, not of the slab, yes of the shaft, and then I'm going to select this guy, and the B we say it is 5 and 8 inches. So it's 5 feet space 8 inches. Good. Now it's two cards, so it's whatever A plus 8, 7 plus 8 inches plus 4 is 16, meaning 7 plus 1, you guys with the 12, 7, 8, plus 4, no, 8 feet, 4 inches, so you select, Eight feet four four inches. So I know that this is one pass passenger shaft exactly. So you can say okay. You can even just measure. Let me delete this one because it's not supposed to be. 
correct there. Dimension this from here to there, and it's 8.4, as I said. It's 7 plus double 8 inches. And dimension the eye from here to here, it's 5.8. So basically, this is one of these units for a passenger. We need two. You can either edit the sketch of this one to make a double, meaning MV move from here to here. Okay. And this is your passenger shaft for two elevators. So you can move this, snap it to the side. Okay, so that's one of the cores. I don't need dimensions anymore. I'm happy with that. But you can copy these shafts and just snap, snap. And again, we need a, a little mechanical space. You can go all the way to the end if you want, or just keep it like that for now. You also need one fright, which is a little bit bigger, so you probably want to put it right behind or just study the possibilities. Let's go to 3D and see how this looks. Okay, that's it. So I'm using two shafts for two elevators, one here and another one there going all the way down to the basement. They have the specific dimension that I need according to the chart. I'm missing the mechanical space, which is another set. And we need the fry, also shaft. And we need the stairs. So that's why I'm leaving it a little bit here for you to start developing only the shafts in Revit, OK? All the levels will have that little ingredient in the middle. And here I made, for example, the elevators next to the grid pen. I did the mechanical shaft. Mechanical shaft, this is the fry that could open here or here. If you have the entrance for, um, for storage in or so. And then we need another two stair shafts that we're going to place our stair afterwards. Uh, this one is quite straightforward. You attach to the constraints of the beams. And the other one has the same dimension, 4 and 4 and 4 and 4. Basically, this is the result that I, I get. No? You need a couple more shafts, one here in the corner, another one there for the gym. And this is another kind of a cut study of how it looks. At this point, you can go to the 3D and see how these openings interact with the beams, no? Actually, we could even... So there's a moment where the shaft is basically the cut in the, in the floor is perfect for the metallic or the, the steel beams. But let's see in the bottom how this looks. It's cutting not so nicely the floor. So we probably want to cut the chains, actually, the the sketch for, for a shaft in the line is with the concrete beam. I'm not going to do it here because actually I'm not even sure if this beam is the correct one. You guys have the correct one, so you should be aligned to that uh, beam in the lower side as well. No? How you do that? It's very simple. You can select, edit sketch. You can even do it from the 3D. It's a little bit daring, but you can select this face, that face, And there's no face there, so you can keep it there. But whatever you move there, you're going to have to move it from the other side, no? So be careful. You probably want to go and change both at the same time, no? So again, structure matters. We cannot go with our elevator downwards and then have a beam there in the middle. That doesn't sound like a good detail, no? 
So the good thing about this program, Revit, or a three-dimensional BIM, is that you can adapt and start changing things as you see the mistakes in 3D, which is the real way that things are shown. So you see here there's a problem. You either change the beam, then you have to call your friend the engineer, or you either change the shaft and move it whatever distance you have here and avoid that beam. No? So it's very like a live, almost like a real engagement with what the project is and change it automatically. No?